Hello YouTube, hello viewers, subscribers, non-subscribers, and anybody else who falls into any other category of people that are watching. Uh, I would first and foremost like to welcome you here. If you've been here before, I'd like to welcome you back. Uh, what we've got here to tinker with today looks like a 2007 Chevrolet Suburban. And uh, uh, weird circumstances, I guess, on this. I'm trying to piece it all together. Uh, this thing was towed in a couple days ago. Uh, the customer stated they had it at another shop. The other shop said they needed a, uh, a battery and a computer and a fuel pump. So that's, that's kind of a lot of stuff. Uh, I need the right keys, so I'll be right back. Well, these appear to be the right keys, so I need to try again. Okay, this key works on the door, so I know it works on the ignition. And I just gotta wiggle it some. Okay, it starts. They also said something about about this thing being sluggish uh, in first gear. Let's uh, oh, there's a first gear slam if I ever felt one. Let's try again. Yeah, it's pretty clunky. All right, let's uh, let's get into the shop and get a scan tool connected to this, and uh, let's see what kind of diagnostic trouble codes that this thing is going to give me to decipher, and uh, then we will make procedural steps and moves forward from there. Well, first things first, I hear some clunky rattling down there. It's not good. Let's start with the easy part on their list, which was a, a battery. Let's see what we've got. Okay, we have a new battery. Uh, it's clean and tight-ish, kind of clean, not really, no, but I'm sure it's making enough connection for, for right now. All right, scan. Uh, something to note is that the oil pressure gauge uh, indicates there is no oil pressure. Um, I do not find that to be factual, otherwise we would hear some rod knocking and lifter noises and everything, but uh, definitely something to pay attention to. All right, our trouble codes indicate a P0230 fuel pump relay control circuit. Uh, we've got a P0523 engine oil pressure circuit high, so something's up with that oil pressure sending circuit and the dreaded p700 tcm transmission control module request that the uh check engine light be turned on it's asking for a warning lamp so let's get out of here and head into the tcm and see what trouble codes the tcm will cough up for us all right transmission uh, also i have discovered that the ac will not power on the light just blinks whenever you go to to turn the compressor on that makes for an uncomfortable diagnostic. Codes menu, display codes, DTC display, ignition, one switch circuit low. We have electrical problems here. This is a P2534. Okay, I'm gonna back this out for right now and get out of the way because the oil delivery truck is here and he has to deliver oil to our tanks over there. So I'm kind of in his way. Oh yeah, and trying to move forward, this thing doesn't really want to go anywhere. It's Definitely feeling sluggish, as they said. I think we're starting off in second gear. And I, I, hear, I hear that rattling down there again. Uh, let's try to manually bring it down into first and see if we have first gear. Nope. Yeah, that's a weird rattle noise I hear, that's for sure. So I'm scrolling through live transmission data and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of PIDs that are missing. They're showing zero value. It's, uh, it's not counting any input shaft RPM. The gear indicator is not indicating what position the shift lever is in. And I think there was a torque converter slip that was not showing yet. Yeah, torque converter duty cycle and we're showing nothing there also on the torque converter. Um, ordinarily, I would wanna go after an electrical issue, seeing as how it's saying it does not have ignition one voltage, uh, but the problem that I have here is I'm getting a lot of rattly noise out of this transmission. So I'm gonna get into the shop when that oil truck moves and uh, I'm gonna check the condition of the fluid before I do anything else or go anywhere else because this thing may have a, uh, a grenaded transmission. 
or at least a grenaded torque converter in, in which case there's torque converter components all over the place through the system and uh, it'll have to come down and uh, be pulled apart so let's inch our way back into the building hello oil truck here we go time to re-pop in the hood all right let's see what kind of condition our fluid's in terrible it's dark in color do one more dip and it is also low maybe about a quart or so low all right let's go underneath and see if we see a leak okay now someone's been down here before because the inspection cover is missing off the bottom of that transmission we can see the flex plate spinning in there uh, I don't see any, any fluid leaks so it, that leads me to believe it may have become overheated and the fluid has been escaping through the vent tube uh, I could be wrong that's just speculation but uh, regardless it is pretty low now swinging back to take a look at this 2534 code, uh, ignition switch one low voltage. Uh, I'm not gonna rule out the possibility that there is an issue with the output voltage uh, to the TCM uh, regarding this, uh, this ignition switch. However, uh, due to the noises and fluid condition, uh, there could be multiple problems here and this is just a, a symptom or just one of the problems. But that sound that I hear out of the trans is uh, a little concerning to me, so I'm gonna focus on the bigger thing first. And it, once I find a direction to go with that, I can circle back Saki style to check out this 2534 code. Um, according to uh, preliminary data, it suggests that the ignition switch is actually faulty and is failing to supply voltage down to the TCM, uh, which could cause some of the symptoms we just experienced. Uh, however, if left neglected and those symptoms were uh, present while the vehicles operated, that is what could have caused uh, any additional transmission damage. So first things first, let's go pop the fuse box and uh, check all the fuses and everything and make sure uh, we don't have any open fuses. Seeing as how this thing has been diagnosed all over town, who knows uh, what we might find. Alrighty, so I just probed uh, all the fuses here with my, uh, my test light and found that all the fuses are closed, meaning they're not blown uh, opposite of open. And uh, that's, uh, that's not really the issue as far as I'm concerned. Now, what I did notice, if you, if you look right here, see how there used to be a relay there? See the witness marks, so to speak, from the, the lack of dust? Now, if I pull up the cover with the diagram, we can see that uh, the one that is missing is labeled fuel pump. Now, if you recall earlier in the ECM, we had a fuel pump circuit open. So uh, I'm suspecting that somebody has removed that and failed to replace it. So what I'm gonna do is steal a similar relay, uh, probably the one over here named Fog Lamp. We're gonna take that one and plug it in over here where the fuel pump goes. I don't know if that's a, an issue or even if this fuse is supposed to be here or this relay is supposed to be here, but plugging it in right now I do hear it uh, clicking so it did close the contacts inside of that relay let's head back inside and clear some trouble codes and uh, see what pops back up next seeing as how I'm about to clear these codes uh, I am gonna take a photograph of them real quick just in case uh, they do not pop up and I'll at least have a code description and uh, and name so I know what I'm working with later. So that's uh, that's the one on the TCM. And let's go uh, document the ECM codes. Uh, backing out. And then I'll go ahead and do a code clear. We'll shut the car down, restart it, and then see if any of those pop back up. And again, uh, the first one on the list is that P0230 fuel pump uh, relay controlled circuit. Now that's, uh, I'm assuming that's the circuit involved in that, um, 
with that relay that we just uh, plugged back in. Uh, the P700, I can clear that also. This code right here is just saying that the TCM has asked the ECM to turn on the check engine light. So all that being said, let's go ahead and back out of this menu and we will clear all the trouble codes inside of this vehicle. So I'll shut the engine off, key on, clear all codes read by code scan. That's gonna ping every module here and erase everybody that's there. Oh, very interesting. Looky here, I've got the key off and out of the vehicle and the engine is still running. Look at that, engine is still running with the key removed. Okay, so there definitely is an issue with the ignition switch on this, but it won't clear the TCM codes and I really do need this thing to shut down. Mm, more evidence. Yeah, it's still, it's still running, it won't shut off. You know, I have not encountered this issue on this platform before. Let's go see what it does if I plug or unplug that relay that I just connected. I bet it'll shut off then. Yep. That explains why they needed a new battery because the system is not powering down when uh, the keys pulled out. Okay. See, we can't do a code clear with the engine running. Let's try it again. Clear all codes, read by code scan. This is interesting. Now the oil pressure gauge is pegged and that's with that relay installed. Oh, there it goes. You just saw it drop. I wonder if there's a some kind of short in the harness on this. I'd better take a very close look at that. Okay, my code scan clearing procedure has completed. Let's go back into the ECM and TCM and see what kind of trouble codes are, are still there. For what it's worth, I'll key it off one more time. And key it back on. Uh, codes menu, display codes please. Okay, all we've got left is this oil pressure business. Let's back out and get into the TCM and see what shows up there. No codes present, okay. Let's start it and see how that transmission feels when I go to shift it. That felt pretty normal. I'm not gonna drive anywhere just yet. I just wanna make sure it doesn't slam into gear. Okay, I still have that weird noise. Yep. And the ratio is not right. It doesn't feel like it's in first gear. Yeah, it's still running again. Look at this. Just to, just to make sure I didn't pull some editing treachery. Still have the key and the engine is still running. Okay. I'm gonna open up this fuse box real quick and we're gonna take a look inside to make sure nothing's shorted in there. Don't know what that does. Yeah, I don't see anything burnt inside of here. I think this is okay. Yeah, that looks all right to my eye. Uh, tough to tell though, um, these fuse blocks are known problems in a lot of the GMs. Oh, well, let's put this back in. Okay, this took a couple minutes of wiggling. But I got her. Now, one thing I did just notice is there's this uh, 15 amp fuse that was hanging out right over there. I need to uh, investigate and see where that thing goes to. And again, I'm back to looking at the little chart and I see right over here, fuse number 19 
we've got the five in a row vertical there's one two a space and then one if you look at the corresponding space we've got of course the five in a row one two space and then one that trans what's that one labeled as five uh, 19 19 19 is labeled as trans ignition one circuit hope you can see it yep trans ignition one circuit so let's try to plug this fuse back in and uh, we're gonna revisit the scan tool and uh, see what happens next and while we're at it let's plug this relay back in that's that fuel pump relay, relay remember huh. I'm not sure how this got into the condition that it's in but we are starting to figure a couple things out here uh, I speculate that the last shop that they mentioned that they had this at that told them it needed a computer and a fuel pump were the same people that removed that fuse and that relay. Come on. Okay, we're back to 80 pounds oil pressure. Okay, and it shuts off now. You guys see me jiggling this lock cylinder. That's uh, not exactly the same issue as the ignition switch. This is just the lock and tumbler in there. Uh, it still appears to be working, but uh, that, like I said, that's gonna be a separate issue. I'm, I'm really not concerning myself with that right now either. Um, I could replace that tumbler and rekey it for the original key, but like I said, I wanna deal with this trans issue and everything first. Look at that. The ignition one circuit for the transmission is no longer present. Yeah, we're getting somewhere now, aren't we? Hmm, let's go into engine and see what kind of codes we have left over in there. Display codes. Okay, engine oil pressure switch. That's kind of all that we have that's, that's left. Let's go uh, try to drive this thing and see what happens. Let's see if it shuts off. Yep, shut off. Okay, it's now shutting off when I tell it to shut off. Cool, let's go see how it ships. Now keep in mind, there was that noise that I heard. Uh, I am, I'm hoping you guys heard it too. I still would not rule out that there's an issue with the transmission, but uh, it seems that we are tracking down very slowly and solving some problems here. Uh, these may be problems that were created by the, the last guy, but, oh, nope, nope, we got first gear. Hmm, now what to do? Okay, I still hear the noise, but we do have first gear. Let's pull up over here in the shade real quick. Park it, shut it down, and see if it shuts off. Yep, shut off. Now, please turn back on. Come on. Wiggle, wiggle. I did uh, just now recheck the scan tool and the only trouble code that I have left is that oil pressure circuit malfunction code. But like I said, I wanna solve this shifting and not starting fuel pump problem or whatever they said it was issue first. It's frustrating. I've spent like an hour going back through somebody else's halfway work just so I can restart where the other guy started and restart in the condition that they found the car in. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hearing a lot of noise from down under something Something is going on with this trans. However, it is shifting now, which is good. Perhaps I will pull the pan down and uh, inspect the internals for metal chunks or whatever. Uh, let's pull some data back up. I'm driving and reading. Uh, let's see, data display, yep. Trans data one. Brakes. Mm, brakes vibrate too. Look 
at that. We've got some data that came back to life. Input RPM is there. Gear position is there. You just saw that change from three to four as it went through a shift. It's giving me the proper gear ratio instead of 0 0.00 to one. Okay, so electronically, this thing is back to life. Now we just need to focus on what it's doing mechanically. All right, windows down because it's getting super hot in here. I'll see you guys when I get back to the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around the block and uh, go present my findings to, uh, to the manager and uh, let's have a chat with the owner and see what we're gonna do next. Okay, let's go present what I found and see what they're gonna do about digesting this situation here. All righty, this thing's been cooling off for a while. Uh, we made contact with the, uh, the owner and uh, there is quite a story to this. Um, they wouldn't tell me, come here, do it. They wouldn't tell me or us uh, who they brought this to, but they brought it to uh, another facility or mechanic or something like that. They said that the battery had been dying overnight and uh, they brought it to some guy. He, he did like an oil change on it once. Um, they put a battery in it, and this is several months ago, put a battery in it and come to find out it's been having this shifting problem with the check engine light and uh, the other symptoms that we had noticed ever since. Um, the story goes that the other people have collected nearly $400 in labor without ever fixing the problem on this car. So the, uh, the customer has requested me to document a very detailed description of what I have done and what I have found and how I have found it because they're going to go back to the other person and uh, probably seek some kind of compensation or a refund. Uh, there, there is treachery suspected. Um, the owner had no idea that that fuse and that relay had been removed. And so they, they do find that situation um, very odd. I am still going to proceed with uh, pulling down the transmission pan for an inspection of the internals. Uh, like I said, I don't particularly care for the nature of that pinging metallic tink tink noise that I heard. And so I do want to make sure that there's no uh, internal damage that may have been, may have taken place here. Uh, furthermore, that fluid uh, looks terrible and it's time to replace it anyway. All right, I got this burb up in the air. We're gonna pull this trans pan down. Uh, it's uh, a series of 13 millimeter bolts around the perimeter of the pan. And a couple in the back, which is, this is two wheel drive, so they're easy to get to, but I have to get this bracket out of the way. And I believe those are Torx bits, if memory serves, T30s, yeah. So I'm gonna get those out of the way and we'll drop this pan down and see what's inside. This thing is still relatively warm, so uh, I need to not touch this exhaust pipe right here. Pardon my obstruction of the view for a second. That bolt does not want to come loose. Hmm. Let's try this other one right here. More lever. You know, and I'm glad that didn't come loose. I uh, I found it was actually a T40, not a 30. I'm glad I didn't force it because I could have rounded that off and that would have really been uh, a problem. Okay, we're loose. Grab a 13 and start getting this perimeter pan bolts removed. Nope. Hmm. You can see it's already starting to drip with just a couple of the bolts removed.
Now I'm gonna leave this bolt in and this one back here in the back and that way once I get all of them removed, the whole pan doesn't fall down and splash everywhere and make a huge mess on top of me. Drips are accelerating. This is not looking promising so far. That fluid is in very horrible condition. Okay, let's swing around to the back side and get these last remaining bolts out, and then we'll drop the pan down from the front in order to uh, drain the fluid that's left inside of there. Okay. Almost free now. Raise this up to contain the spillage, and I'll break this one loose and remove the fronts. Oh, spilling on my foot. Gross. All right, let's change the angle of the dangle a little bit so you guys can see the waterfall action that's about to go down here. Now, the idea is to just get this pan down without spilling all the oil all over myself and or the floor and that's to be done very carefully now there's only two bolts holding this pan up there's the one in the back which is barely broken loose and then there's the one up here on this corner and i'm going to back this corner bolt out and it's going to lower the front of the pan here it comes I'm not going to pull it all the way out yet it's going to let it tilt and drain. Hmm, seems to slow ah. down. Let's go a little more. Okay, it's out. It's out now. Sorry, Peter. I, I wasn't very observant. I didn't realize this was yours. So now this thing's dangling just from, from one bolt. I'm gonna sneak in on the back side and back that one out and that's gonna allow it to drop down even farther. Uh-huh. This is the part where no matter how careful you are, you screw up and get fluid on everything. Peter's a dancing queen. It's hot, kind of hot. Okay, let's let this down a wee bit so I can reach. Hot on my fingies. Yeah, that fluid is smoked. Mm, super nasty. Alrighty, so before I dump out all of this fluid right here, I, uh, I've taken this uh, bottle and cleaned it out as best I could. Uh, I think I'd like to capture some of this and perhaps have it lab tested uh, just for fun to see what's inside of it. But I need to uh, need to get the contents inside of the can without contaminating the can as best as possible. And I'm just gonna let it ride. Whatever I get, it's what I get. I do have some oil test kits that I ordered, but I don't know if they'll test this trans fluid. But we'll see. Good science is good observation. Okay, 
a decent sample. Okay, and I also have a filter kit here for this. So let's pop this guy out. Come out, please. It's hot. Hot, 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 hot. I do see a little bit of sparkly action inside of that filter element. Okay. All right, let's get out of here and take a look inside of the pan. Let's see what we got here. Well, I've seen worse. It's not the best. This is it's a lot of clutch material. clean it out, put it back together, and uh, fill it with some fresh fluid. We'll take it out on a drive and see how the, the car as a whole starts to behave. Well, we're not going to need this, and we're not going to need this. Oh, almost got a good clean break on that gasket. Too bad. Come off. Uh, let's give this magnet right here a wipe down. Yeah, all that is metal shavings. Uh, nothing big. You know, there's no chunks here, but that is metallic in nature. Yeah, it's stuck pretty good to the magnet in here. The magnet's doing its job. It's supposed to collect all that stuff so it's no longer suspended in solution. I do have a new filter and seal here. I'm going to go ahead and pop this back in. Then we can set this gasket up and get the pan back and uh, reinstall. So these rubber gaskets have a cool feature where the bolts are slightly larger than the holes in the gasket. Uh, therefore, you can use the bolts to keep the gasket aligned. And you don't have to install any sealant. I usually just do this with four of these bolts and then uh, I'll place the rest of them in position after the pan is up on the bottom of the trans. By the way, I should mention and make a disclaimer that I am not a transmission master. Yeah, it's not, uh, not something I've gotten too deeply into. Uh, I know when they're junk and I know when they're worth saving. This one is potentially savable because of the lack of metal parts here. However, I do believe the clutches uh, have suffered a lot of wear uh, due to the, uh, the no first gear condition. And yeah, I, I don't know how long they were driving it like that, but I do know that uh, the clutch packs in this thing have, um, have suffered quite a bit. Um, at this point, I think the thing is only uh, it's a matter of time before it starts to slip and it, it eats itself to death. Okay, let's swing back down below and uh, get this pan back into position. Okay, we'll fit this pan in and start all the bolts by hand. I'll leave them as loose as possible so I can get the other bolts 
past the gasket. These gaskets still like to fold and move out of the way even, even though they're secure with, with the fasteners. All right, I'll check back in when these bolts are all threaded into the gasket. All righty, I got all these in. I'm just gonna go around and apply some torque to them. And seat this pan. Going in a crisscross pattern. Okay, now as you can see, this is covered in old fluid, so let's give it a good rinse with some solvent. All right, I'll turn our attention upwards one more time and we're gonna get this bracket bolted back in and then we can finally uh, go back and add it. Whoa, gravity. We can go back and add our fluid. Click. All right, my work down here is done. Let's get out of here. Let's get my safety jack out of here. It's a very windy day and I didn't want this giant sail of a vehicle getting blown around. Suburban coming down. Refill time. Okay. Funnel's seen better days. This isn't gonna work. It might. Shove it in there. It's either gonna work or it's not. Name that game show. Level check number one for a preliminary measurement. Yeah, it needs to settle. The tube is full. Okay, probing number two. <laughs> it's still reading over full. Let's go start it up, prime the filter, and click it through the gears. kind of dark in color but that's to be expected we didn't remove the full capacity of the system that's a little better still kind of over Let's take it out for a ride so do you guys remember that little blue wire that I found inside of the uh, the fuse box when I first started this video. Well, off camera, I uh, took a look underneath and I traced that wire back and found out that that wire was integrated into the circuit that uh, supplies power to the fuel pump. And I, I usually don't like to suspect uh, things like treachery and crookery but it appears that the evidence in this case is pointing towards uh, the last guy that worked on this was uh, setting this customer up for, uh, for, a, for a scam. 
Um, I, I really hate to admit it uh, or to acknowledge it like that because I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but everything that I have seen and come up with suggests that they created a problem, yet that problem was still allowing the vehicle to function. Uh, because basically with that little blue wire, what the guy had done is he bypassed the ignition circuitry that powers the fuel pump on and off. And he ran that blue wire straight to power at the fuse box, which kept the fuel pump running at all times. Also, what he had done is disconnected the, uh, the transmission control voltage one signal or voltage one circuit, which put the trans effectively into a limp mode and it was not capable of shifting on its own. It only had uh, probably a third and fourth gear. And this guy who owns this truck went back to the same guy two or three times telling him, you know, the problem's not right, the problem isn't right. And the, the person had recommended that they replace the fuel pump, probably because there was a fuel pump circuit or a fuel pump driver mo module circuit code, something like that. I forget exactly what it said, but there was a code in there that uh, suggested there was a fuel pump issue. And who knows what else the guy tried to sell him um, because of that code. For, oh yeah, a computer. He tried to sell him a computer for that uh, DTC that said something about ignition one voltage inside of the transmission control module. And if, uh, if the fellow that owns this car had agreed to that, all that the, the crook mechanic guy would have had to have done is replace the fuse and replace the relay. And that would have solved, solved all of the problem. Now, I have not found out how this fellow who owns this truck went to that guy in the first place. And like I said earlier, he wouldn't tell us who it was, which I can understand that. Uh, but so maybe it's a friend of his or a neighbor or my brother's cousin or something. Who knows? But he wouldn't say who had done the work. Uh, but from what I have gathered so far uh, and from what the customer has kind of communicated with us is he also suspects treachery. Uh, like I said earlier, he had paid this individual $400 or something to just kind of go around in a circle and then the guy told him he needs a he needs a computer and a fuel pump. So I find this situation most unfortunate because being a representative of this trade, folks like that is what gives all of us a bad name. And it, truth be told, I'd like to find out who it is just so I can go over there and have a chat with the person because he's making me look bad inadvertently. And and that goes for all the rest of the 300,000 of us nationwide who try to do a good job and uh, and want to to produce a stellar service. Uh-oh, someone's having a bad day. But I guess the saying is true. It only takes, you know, one bad apple to... Uh, taint the reputation of everybody else. Well, I, know, I know it's not exactly the same, but it takes one bad apple to ruin the whole bunch. And one guy doing this kind of shady work makes everybody raise an eyebrow at the rest of us and then we all get to look bad. And the killer part is, is people always remember and focus on the negative. They, they rarely remember a positive experience and then let that experience uh, be the baseline for which they judge a particular situation. So no matter how many times you do a good deed, you know, a thousand good deeds plus one bad deed, and nobody's going to remember those thousand good deeds. They're just going to remember the bad experience. And it, it's a shame. And this is unfortunately the stigma that we all have to live under like a, like a looming storm cloud. So anyway, uh, back to the truck that we're working on it appears to be shifting exactly as designed. It has all of its gears and uh, it appears to be operating normally. Uh, however, that little tinky tink tink sound is still there, but they did not want to focus too heavily on that. Um, at this point, the owner of this truck just wanted me to verify that the total destruction has not taken place inside of this transmission and he would like me to extensively document uh, what I have found here today and what we have done, uh, which I will be doing that in writing and I'm going to present that back to the customer and he is going to take that information back to the guy who told him he needed a fuel pump and a computer and uh, we're gonna let them deal with the rest of the situation. And you're right, I have uh, once again neglected to install my safety restraint. 
I've been pretty good about that lately, but yeah, I, you guys got me on this one. Anyway, seatbelt's on, so I am now in compliance with Florida state law. And the only chores I have left to do on this thing is swing it back to the shop. I'm gonna recheck the trouble codes again, just to make sure nothing popped up while we were driving. I do not believe I'm gonna find much else. If I do, I'll include that clip in the video. And uh, I've also got to recheck the uh, trans fluid level. Um, it was slightly over when we left the shop. Uh, if it is slightly over, I've got a little vacuum pump I can stick down there and uh, I will set the level to its maximum full mark. Uh, nope, can't go, traffic coming. All right guys, well, I'm, I think this video is gonna run kind of long. So unless there's more to see when I get back to the shop, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off right now. Um, as per my usual protocol, I would like to thank every single one of you for watching this video, especially since you've made it all the way here to the end. The only thing I would ask of you in exchange for the free content is to take one nanosecond out of your day and uh, scroll down and tappy tap that thumbs up button. That button is what lets me and YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And if YouTube thinks that I'm doing a good job, it is far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me, and especially good for them. All that being said, again, thank you guys for watching. And of course, I have to remind myself to not forget to remind you guys to not forget to have a great day. See you guys later. Dang, I'm getting pretty good at talking to the camera. I, uh, I did all that with like only one or two takes and I didn't have to start over. Proud of myself, yay! All right, let's check this fluid level and codes real quick. Popping in the All right, real quick, no codes in the TCM. And the only thing left in the ECM is that oil pressure sending unit circuit high code. Cool, we're getting somewhere. Right on the money. Cool. Goodbye, Chevy Suburban. Goodbye.